probably be best known for his work on gyroscopes and linear induction motors is Professor Eric Lathwaite, who has recently had his new book released entitled The Engineer Through the Looking Glass. And with me now is Professor Lathwaite, who has kindly agreed to talk to us about his book. Well, welcome, Professor. Thank you. Now, I understand the book is based on the TV series, which was recorded for the Royal Institution Lecture in 1974. Uh, why has it taken so long for it to come out? Oh, these things do. Well, one's not to ask. Uh, it depends on the publisher. In this case, it was BBC Publications. Yeah. And for various reasons that you don't need to inquire, uh, I went through five different editors in the course of six years. Yeah. And that eventually you get one who's determined to finish it. I mean, I mean, I don't know how they run their system. You just have to be patient. Yeah, it wasn't that you recently decided to do it. Oh, no, it was on the cards from before the lectures yeah. the BBC undertook to publish. Mm -hmm. But uh, whether they're understaffed or what, I'm not sure. But the facts of life are that that's how long it took. Yeah. Now, the book is entitled The Engineer Through the Looking Glass. And, of course, your other book is The Engineer in Wonderland. Um, have you some fascination in Lewis Carroll? Is he a no, I can tell you how it began, actually. It began with the man who wrote a standard work on my side of the business, mm -hmm. Professor Say, from Harriet Watt. And he was visiting me in 1966, about the time I was looking for a title for my Christmas lectures. Yeah. And he said, well, knowing you, uh, wouldn't curiouser and curiouser be a good idea? And I said, ah, yes, I think you would. And then he said, better than that, why don't you call the whole thing The Engineering Wonderland and have every lecture and chapter in the book, therefore, named after a quotation from Alice in Wonderland. I said, what a splendid idea. So we thought of others, mm -hmm. like obviously the first chapter had to be The White Rabbit, which is about curiosity, because Alice only followed The White Rabbit because it had a waistcoat and took a watch out of its pocket. Yeah. So it went on from there, you mm. see. Well, that <coughs> series was the first ever to be televised from the Royal Institution. It was about the 135th series of Christmas lectures um, directed for a, a juvenile auditory, as it was put in Michael Faraday's time. And um, the, the BBC seemed to like them, and they've had them televised ever since. Well, it was about three years after I'd finished that series that I sort of got up one morning, and I'm not usually very bright first thing in the morning, and I suddenly thought, if you'd done the engineering in Wonderland, it would be natural to come back and do the engineer through the looking glass. Yeah. Now, no one has done the Christmas lecture on television twice at that time because, of course, television ruins it. You can't do the same show again. I mean, Michael Faraday gave his famous six lectures on the, hist the chemical history of a candle 17 times, but then, as the present director told me, he said uh, they kept growing up, didn't they, and growing out of the system. But anyway, I went to Sir George Porter, who's the director of the Royal Institution, He's um, Nobel Prize winner for chemistry, yeah. mm -hmm. and said to him, "Look, if you ever want a long stop in case someone drops out or whatever from Christmas lectures, I've got another entirely new change of program, uh, which I could call Engineer Through the Looking Glass." So yeah. he thanked me and said he would bear it in mind. And only two years later, uh, I mm. was asked if I would do it. And then he, Sir George, followed me up and did a second series himself. So we're mm -hmm. the two people who've done two lots on television. Yeah. But these, you'll understand, we're eight years apart, 1966, yes, 1974. Yes, 1974. Yeah. Um, well, let's have a quick look at a clip from the third lecture entitled Jam Tomorrow and Jam Yesterday. Okay, in the mirror. Could you have the mirror up, Bill? A mathematician will tell you that the ideal shape of aircraft for subsonic flight is a triangle with one side leading, flying that way. It seems all wrong today because we've got used to this streamlining of modern aircraft, but the old-fashioned aircraft, like the Spitfire of the war, conformed pretty closely to that triangle. You see, you've got the front edge leading, and then the tail fins and the wings made a neat sort of triangle, and that was the way they flew. And the first aircraft to go through the sound barrier were found to have reverse control. That is to say, when you went into supersonic flight, and if you wanted to go down into a dive, you had to pull the stick back, not push it forwards. So all the controls, left and right, up, down, were all reversed. So it really was a mirror. The mathematician then comes along and says, look, all you have to do to make the perfect aircraft for supersonic flight is to reflect the triangle in the mirror. And here's your supersonic aircraft coming with the point leading. And this is why our modern aircraft have got swept back wings 
as in this film clip we've got of a Vulcan taking off. You see the almost perfect triangular shape of this very fearsome looking aircraft. Well now, Professor, uh, these lectures were carefully scripted, but how closely did you keep to them? Oh, fairly closely. Um, in some of them, there's a little more explanation, mm -hmm. especially about the gyroscopes. Um, but mainly, the difference between the book and the lectures is that I wrote a seventh chapter for the book, and this consisted of clips from the best of the letters that I received after I finished yeah. the lectures. You see, in January 75, I had over a thousand lectures on gyroscopes, a thousand letters on gyroscopes alone. <coughs> so I was able to, to pick and choose from these and take clippings here and there. And in the end, I think I wrote to 27 people, sent them a prepaid postcard and said, may I use your letter mm -hmm. in a book? A, provided I undertake to enclose your name, and B, provided I undertake not to include your name. And out of 27 cards I sent out, I got 27 replies, yes. So this was great. And all <coughs> these letters are reproduced mm -hmm. in Chapter 7, which I think is the best chapter because somebody else wrote it. Oh, there were some fabulous letters. Yeah, yeah I understand uh, Bill Coates, who, who was in most oh, of these. Oh, Bill. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he's recently received the MBE. Um, how much did you depend on other people for experiments? And well, if you read Engineering Wonderland, I think in the acknowledgments to that, I've said that Bill added or improved upon 43 of the demonstrations. Now, Bill can do this for everybody. He'll do it mm -hmm. this week for an electro engineer like myself. Next week, he'll do it for a biochemist. Next week, he'll do it for a metallurgist. He can always improve on your demonstrations. I keep leaning on Bill to write a book himself. I said, Bill, you mustn't r retire or whatever or leave this planet before you've left behind a book as to how you do it. You are the grand master of presentation. You want to write a book on how to illustrate a lecture. Well, I saw him some months later, and I said, Bill, how's that book coming? I know you've not started. He said, I've got a title. So I said, uh, you have? He said, yep, from flap to flap. I said, Bill, that's your autobiography, not the book I want you to <laughs> write. Yeah. Um, because Bill was in flaps before mm -hmm. the Royal Institution. Um, Bill is one of the three men I've had the pleasure to know who, being highly intelligent and imaginative, as Bill certainly is, has put away all ordinary fear, such as you and I know it. You'll understand that Bill jumped with the first airborne division at Arnhem. He was mm -hmm. one of the yeah. 2,000 who came back out of 10,000 who dropped. Um, Bill is unassuming, doesn't look as old as he should for his age, and still very fit and active, and his brain's as alert as ever. He's a fabulous man. Yes, because of course most of these experiments, or quite a few of them, were just tried out before the lectures. Oh, some, yes, in, in the um, sixth lecture of the Engineering Wonderland, it was totally mm -hmm. unrehearsed. Yeah. Because I wanted to do an experiment that really was an experiment. I mean, uh, school physics is made dull by so many poor teachers who direct, now, children, we're going to do an experiment. Now, what will happen when I release the pen? You know, a yeah. big deal. Actually, if they put it across a different way and said, I have to try it because we've no proof that it will fall, and that would be exciting. Mm -hmm. But to say, now let's try what will happen. It doesn't matter if it's a constant volume air thermometer or a weak stone bridge. They all know it's not an experiment. It's been done a million times before. So I was determined to do at least one experiment that was unrehearsed. Yeah. And now, do you give much explanation to why things do happen? Because I understand you couldn't explain it in the lectures. Oh, there I, there's some of it I still can't explain. I mean, gyroscopes mm -hmm. are like electromagnetic induction. And this is my speciality. You'll understand yeah. I've done... 30 years research on electromagnetic induction, and I know perfectly well that I don't understand it. It is not given to us to understand. It depends on your definition of understand, of course. Yeah. But in the way that you understand that if you push a book, it'll move along, mm -hmm. it, it, it isn't like that with electromagnetism. You make electric motors on the basis that every time you've put iron and copper together in that sort of a formation, it's done the thing you want to do now. So you have every belief that it'll do it next time. But it is belief. There, for an engineer like myself, there is no truth. You can't say uh, there are laws of physics. The laws of physics are collections of known phenomena that have been listed and classified. It's much like biology in this respect. Yeah. Well, it's a fascinating book. Um, 
Which they, one? Well, both of them. Both I, have, I have read most of, quite a bit of this. Fascinating book, and may I wish you every success with it. Thank you very much Thank indeed. Thank you for coming. Thank you.